Well, I grew up on a farm in eastern North Carolina in Wilson County, although I was born in Guilford County. Uh, I went to public schools. We did not have kindergarten, uh, so I went K through 12 to Rock Ridge School. By the way, Ava Gardner graduated there. She, that's our claim to fame, <laughs> not me. Uh, my mother was an English teacher and a librarian. Uh, <clears throat> I have one brother and she stayed at home and took care of us until it was about, uh, probably I was in high school and she realized college is coming up and I need to go back and start teaching again uh, so that we can save up enough money to send our children to the public universities. Uh, I went all the way through grades one through 12 in our public schools. I had good teachers. And then of course I had the four years uh, at NC State where I was student body president. Uh, I was uh, in Phi Kappa Phi, the, the, the academic uh, equivalent of, of Phi Beta Kappa. Uh, I went on to get a master's degree in economics. My master's thesis was chosen as one of the three best in America. Then I went to law school at Carolina, uh, graduated there. Uh, so I've been involved in public education all of my life. It, I, I was formed by it. Well, the reason we started Smart Start was because we saw that too many children were coming to school not ready, not prepared to, to read and to begin to do math and other things. Uh, they had not had a chance to, they had not learned vocabulary, they hadn't learned these words, they didn't, uh, they, they hadn't become ready to learn. Uh, so, uh, and, and some children of course were not being treated well. We also found out, frankly, from the scientists about what was happening in the earliest years of a child's life. The most important years are the first three years. That's when the brain is developing the most. Every child is born with uh, about the same number of brain cells, cells in the brain, uh, and they run in the billions. But, <clears throat> but the capacity for intelligence comes about when those little brain cells connect up. And that happens when children are stimulated. It isn't just a matter of food and water and air. It's when they get stimulation. They see colors, they hear sounds, they feel touching and loving. Uh, those things really help develop the capacity for intelligence. So if we, wanna, if we want the schools, K through 12, to be successful, and then people to go on to higher education, get good jobs, be good citizens, we've gotta make sure the first three years are good and that's what Smart Start tends to, uh, making sure that every child, helping every child start to school healthy and ready to learn. I like to say ready to fly. Uh, but providing help to those parents so that if they're in child care, it's high quality child care, or I like to call it early education. Uh, helping those parents learn how to be more effective parents and to help, help their children begin to learn. Uh, seeing that they get the kind of health care they need uh, as they develop. Those are all the things that we do with Smart Start. It's a part of a whole education system. It's getting children ready to learn. Then we want them K through 12 in the public school system. Then we want them to go on to higher education. Our wonderful community colleges and our great universities. All of it is, 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 is public work with some private help and it's all important in making North Carolina all that it can and should be. Well, I, I think we ought to be expanding pre-K. I think every child who needs it ought to get it. Uh, and so I, I, I think it's a mistake to cut those things. Now, sometimes the, the legislature has to work within a, they always have to have a budget. Uh, but, but the, the important thing is for the legislature to provide the funds so that we can do what we need to do in education. And don't just say there's some arbitrary limit on how well we can do in education. No, you, the first thing you do is what do we need to do to help our children learn? 
and be successful. And then you go find the funds to pay for that. Uh, and, and that's what we've got to get about in North Carolina, finding the funds, uh, first of all, committing ourselves to excellence, every child getting it, all of them being successful, and then assuring that we have the funds to make sure that, to, to make that happen. Well, we, we put large numbers of teacher assistants into the schools in the mid-70s. Uh, I had run on a platform, I went out to the people and said, what do you think of this? Is it a good thing to do? Uh, that To make sure that every child learns to read. Learns to read, so pretty basic. And the teachers needed help because so many of these uh, 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 children were behind. And so they needed some help. So we did put assistance into every classroom. We call them reading assistants. Every classroom in grades one, two, and three, and then of course, kindergarten already had an assistant for every teacher uh, to help these children learn to read. And they made, they made real progress. Uh, the, uh, now the legislature has cut out a lot of those assistants that I and the legislature put in years ago uh, $120 million was cut out in the last legislature, uh, meaning that huge numbers of assistants are gone from the schools. The teachers don't have that help, and the children aren't getting that additional instruction and help. The North Carolina Teaching Fellows Program was one of the best things we ever did to improve public education and help all of our children. One of the best. Uh, those programs were kind of like the Moorhead Scholars or the, uh, the scholarships at NC State and other places. Uh, the, the young people who went in them got the scholarships, uh, committed to teach for four years. They became excellent teachers. Uh, and uh, it, we improved education. Te uh, 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 test scores went up. We know our children were learning more. And the teaching fellows, a lot of them went into schools uh, that needed a little extra spark, you know, some more excellence, and they provided it. And uh, the whole school got better. The whole faculty got better because some teaching fellows were there. Uh, a great, great mistake to cut that program out. One of the best things we've done to improve the effectiveness of our teaching force in North Carolina. And I hope very much we'll restore that. We were the only state in America that had done something like that. Hugely successful for our children and our economy for the future. And I hope we'll put it back in. We must raise teacher pay in North Carolina. We've slipped to 46, we may slip on further down. Uh, uh, we're losing many of our best teachers. Uh, yesterday, I heard the story of a woman who had come down from New Jersey uh, years ago because she'd heard good things about North Carolina. She saw that we'd raised teacher pay. This was a good place to live. She came down and started teaching in one of our primary schools. She was con considered to be, by everybody, the best fourth grade teacher they had. She, when she came to, uh, from New Jersey down to North Carolina, she said, I want to try to get away from all that crime. And I want to move to North Carolina and teach. Now, because of the low salaries, she's having to move back to New Jersey. And she said, I'm going to, I can't, I'll get $10,000 more per year if I go back to teach in New Jersey. And I'll just have to put up with the crime. What a shame the best fourth grade teacher in the school. The children are gonna be hurt because of this. Our future's gonna be hurt. Uh, so we really need to do what we did in, in the late 90s. First of all, pass a law committing the state to raise teacher pay to the national average. And it keeps going up, by the way, so that we can have good teachers, we can compete for good teachers and then put the money in the budget to do it. 
over four years, I put the money in the budget as governor to get us up to the national average. It cost one and a quarter billion dollars. And it was the right thing to do, and the people voted to do it. Now, this wasn't somebody that somebody pulled the wool over your eyes. No, as a candidate for governor, I went out there to the people and campaigned on it. I said, if I'm elected, I intend to have us raise teacher pay to the national average, and we're going to require more of our teachers so that they're more effective, so our students are learning more. But we're going to raise teacher pay to the national average. If you're for it, vote for me. If you're not, vote for the other person. They voted for me. They voted to do that. North Carolina did it. And partly as a result of that, we saw test scores going up. Students were learning more. People were more committed to education, excited about it, proud of it and we need to do it again. In deciding how to pay teachers, first of all, you ought to pay them all an adequate salary. We've now got teachers who are having to work a second or third job. Their children are ready to go off to college and they can't pay for it. That's wrong. We ought to pay all teachers a fair salary and, and that involves getting us to the national average overall. Now there is a place, once we get everybody up to where they ought to be, th there's a place for paying for performance, looking at how well the teachers are doing, let people, excellent teachers go in and, and, and uh, observe them and, and say this teacher's excellent, uh, this teacher needs help and whatever. Uh, it's fair to look, it's a good idea to look at student learning. That's a good thing to do. There are other things that we can do. We can ask the students how the teachers are doing. What do you think? Uh, but that should be on top of an adequate salary that we pay to every teacher. And we're not doing it now. And we need to change that. And we need to raise teacher pay to the national average. And a part of all of it can be, and I think appropriately should be, some pay for performance looking at how students are doing. One time we put in a program that I recommended called the ABC program in which we, we looked at every school and we said, how is the whole school doing? The faculty working together? Are they making progress? Are, they, are the students learning a year's worth of learning every year? If they are, fine, give them a bonus. If they're learning 110%, more than the average, give them some more money. Spread it out so you know that every teacher participate in it. That kind of thing is fine. Uh, but first, we've got to get the basic pay up to the national average, and we ought to do it right away. I am strongly opposed to vouchers, public school vouchers. Uh, students should come to our public schools. They shouldn't be, we shouldn't be giving them money to go to private schools. We have pretty good schools. Some, many of them are excellent. I'm just talking to doctors who are so proud of the schools their children are going to. They could go to any schools. Uh, but I'm opposed to vouchers. That's the wrong way to go. We should put that money into making the public schools excellent. And we have the responsibility then to make sure they are very good. There is no excuse for having lousy public schools where children aren't learning. We can't have that. And in some cases that's given us a problem. Uh, but, but vouchers are not the way to go. Adequate support for the public schools and paying attention to success in those schools and all children learning is the right thing to do. We should speak up and all of our leaders should speak up and say we believe in the public schools and we're going to support them. We believe in the teachers. We have good teachers. We should respect them. We should appreciate them. We should reward them. Uh, and we should immediately commit to raise teacher pay in North Carolina to the national average. We should begin to put the money in the budget to do that, I think over four years. Uh, and I think then you'd see everybody getting on board, working together, excited about this big venture we're on now to make our schools better. Uh, that's, that's what we ought to do. Uh, now, you know, there's, there's an appropriate place for some uh, variety in some of the schools. Uh, some of the charter schools have merit. 
uh, I say that, that charter schools, which are public, but they ought to be good charter schools. They ought to be successful charter schools. And we ought not to have too many of them. In some cases, we've gotten uh, so many new charter schools that the public schools are left without enough students. Uh, in any event, this is something we can do. Uh, this is the right way to go. And I can tell you, as the governor who, who has recruited more industry and jobs to North Carolina than anybody else, those companies come because of our education. They like Smart Start. They're, they appreciate our progress on public schools, K through 12. They love our community colleges and our universities. That's why the jobs come. They don't come because we are cutting and want to have the lowest tax base in America. That's not the way to economic growth and a good future. Education should be a bipartisan matter, and it has been in the past, by and large. Governor Jim Holzhauser was a wonderful education governor. When he was elected, first Republican governor in the century, when he was elected, we had a little bit of a, of a, uh, of a surplus in the budget. And some people said, send it all back to the taxpayers, refund it all. You know, you don't need any extra money. He said, I'd rather have public school kindergartens and he proposed it. He had run on it, by the way, as I had. And he put the money in the budget, and we put them in, in three years. We said we we're going to do it over four years. First year, we put a fourth of the children in the kindergarten. Second year, another fourth. The next year, we had the money, and we put the rest of them in. So we did it in three years, because a Republican governor, a good education governor, supported it. He also supported raising teacher pay very high. We went up, we were probably in the low 40s, we went up to 27th in the country because he recommended it, he pushed for it. In fact, he was endorsed by the teachers. They knew he was a supporter of teaching and education. Uh, governor Jim Martin was a good education governor. He support, supported much of the, of the origins of Smart Start. He believed in that. He was a college professor, science teacher. Uh, so uh, education should be a bipartisan uh, uh, matter, but you can't just say the words. You have to do the deeds. You have to find the funding, put it in there, set high goals, urge our people and help them toward meeting those goals so every child learns. And it's got to be done on a bipartisan basis in North Carolina. I think the best thing we can do, and the goal we should have for all of our children, is to provide a really excellent education for them, and an equally good education for children in every school in North Carolina. I grew up in a fairly poor area. My schools weren't as good. They were pretty good. I had some wonderful teachers. But they needed to be better. I've spent my life, Terry Sanford spent his life, trying to make those schools a lot better. And we made progress. And people around the country knew it. They pointed to North Carolina. They tried to emulate North Carolina. And now they're saying, what in the world is going on in North Carolina? So we need to get back on track. We need to raise teacher pay to the national average. We need to support early education, help every child start the school healthy and ready to learn. We need to take these students as far as they can go with excellent teaching. And we need to have the highest goals for them and hopes for them. But we have to support it, and we need to do that as a people with our money, our, our tax money. We pay for our schools, and we want to pay for them. And it's time now that we, that we support them in a stronger way, and we get back on this path of excellence.